All right, so we got the 420 spoilers, and it seems like all the bad stuff that was happening in the previous chapter is being undone, kind of, in this chapter, or at least things are going back because Deku is getting his arms back in a pretty wild way. It kind of combines a few things that we thought was going to happen, but not exactly in the way that we thought they were going to. A lot of craziness. So let's get right into it. So the chapter begins with Aizawa, Mike, and Kurogiri on a tiny island. Mike is holding Kurogiri by the shirt and telling him to wake up already. He says that Shirakumo's corpse shouldn't have been violated like that and is about to punch Kurogiri while his eyes get teary. Aizawa points out that he's crying and Mike says that he doesn't cry since he's a man. But Aizawa says that he was talking about Kurogiri. Mike tells him that that's impossible since he's a Nomu, it must be the raindrops. So at the end of the previous chapter, as we saw All For One had taken over Shigaraki's body, it was about to pretty much take out Izuku, like once and for all, you know, because we talked about he lost his arms and All For One was back. Suddenly, some Class 1A students showed up to stop All For One from taking out Izuku, and then we also saw Aizawa coming through a Kurogiri warp gate. And we were wondering, like, oh, you know, what happened with them? Because I think the last time we saw them all, Aizawa present Mike and Kurogiri had fallen through one of his like warp gate and now we're seeing what had happened they apparently had been teleported to like this tiny island and they're having like this big final moment here Mike says that Aizawa shouldn't expect another miracle like that one that happened at Tartarus they're 31 years old no longer second years in UA but Aizawa says that Shirakumo died while he was a student besides there must be a reason why he saved them both from dying so yeah I guess the the miracle they're talking about that happened at Tartarus was when like Aizawa and present Mike were interrogating uh, Kurogiri and they were having like that breakthrough where Shirakumo the person that Kurogiri originally was was like starting to come through Kurogiri and that's when they knew that there was still like a piece of Shirakumo still in there because you know as it says here Shirakumo did die as a student you can actually see this in the my hero vigilante spin-off series while some people will tell you that it's like 100 percent canon to the series it's like a kind of canon to be honest it's not fully but it definitely has some aspects of my hero in it such as like with this backstory of Shirakumo, like the third person in Aizawa's friend group back when he was in UA. You know, as a second year, as it says here, it was like Aizawa, present Mike, and Shirakumo. Shirakumo had like that cloud quirk. He was kind of based off of uh, Sun Wukong, I guess. And he had died from like this rubble falling on him, long story short. But first guys, let's talk about Skillshare, because lately I've been struggling with my productivity and I've been looking for ways to level it up. And Skillshare has really been able to help me with that because I took Thomas Frank's class, Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best. Thomas is also a YouTuber and an author, so I suppose he was able to get through to me better because he really showed me how to cultivate a professional mindset, like even for beginners, as well as how to set up my physical and digital space to work for me and not against me, along with collaboration tactics to make my life and projects easier, and the art of building my inspiration like a muscle. But if you're looking for something else, Skillshare also has tons of classes in many categories like photography, graphic design, music, music, cooking, business, marketing, and much more. But aside from that, Skillshare also has learning paths, which includes multiple classes all pertaining to one skill. And I'm currently taking Graphic Design Basics, Start Exploring and Expressing, where I'm gonna learn basic tools, approaches, and thinking to orient me in the field and to get my creative and first memorable designs. So guys, if you're looking to better yourself this year and use a very valuable learning path from Skillshare, check the link in the description because the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks guys. And Dr. Yuji Ko, all for ones like right hand man, had found him, took his body conveniently like he always does, and then altered him and made him into like a Nomu as they refer to him here, but the Nomu turned out to be Kurogiri with an altered quirk that made his cloud quirk into like Kurogiri's warp gate quirk. And also, I don't know, wiped his memory and personality and made him into who he is and the, you know, protector slash 
babysitter of Shigaraki. But whatever Yujigo did couldn't like completely fully erase the Shirokumo aspect of himself. Aizawa says that they managed to generate a white spark that mixed with darkness. It will never be 100% white again, but it's not 100% black either. And now, as UA teachers, they need to guide the student until they graduate, as long as they remember their origin. The mist increases in size, and Kurogiri says, Yamada, Mike starts to cry, even more and says that memories never die. Cut to Tsukuuchi in the control room, and Aizawa asks him through the comms if Monoma can still fight. Tsukuuchi says that he can't, because he hit his head and is unconscious. Aizawa then asks how many people can still fight on each battlefield. Cuts to Aizawa arriving at the underground shelter and telling Ectoplasm that they're now able to use Kurogiri's portals. He says he doesn't know how long Kurogiri will work, so he needs to gather as many heroes as possible in the shortest possible time. And Death Arms volunteers to go fight, and so does another hero. It's none other than Astro from Barrage, Horikoshi's previous manga. Okay, so yeah, they fully have control over Kurogiri's warp gates here, like the portals, which is huge because, you know, getting a bunch of heroes from point A to point B is crucial right now because everyone's kind of all over the map at this point, many, many miles away from each other. And I'm sure you're thinking like, oh wait, Ectoplasm was with Eri because, you know, we were talking about her in the previous chapter like she can do a lot here with her rewind quirk which apparently doesn't even work at this point because she doesn't have enough quote unquote energy in her horn but we're gonna find out that doesn't really matter also as for who astro is uh, and what barrage is horikoshi's previous manga we'll go over that and a bunch more stuff in my full review for this chapter which would like to get out tomorrow morning if possible so please subscribe for that guys if you haven't already i know a lot of you guys watch my videos from the recommended or the browse features and that's fine i get it but let's get to 300k guys and then i'll, I'll stop asking to subscribe for a while after that <laughs> I appreciate it. The civilian who didn't want to let Deku into UA takes off his shirt and gives it to Aizawa, asking him to use it to treat some hero's wounds. Several other civilians do the same, and Aizawa thanks them. Suguuchi says that the Takoba battle still isn't over. Cut to Takoba, and we see Ghastly fighting Sero, Sato, 13, and other heroes. All seems lost, but suddenly Tokage, Kamakiri, Ectoplasm, and the other heroes arrive through the portals. Phase 3 of the Divide and Conquer operation starts, says Aizawa. So yeah, we're finally coming back to the Ghastly fight, which is kind of like the, uh, the side ancillary battle that's been going on. Ghastly is like that guy who uh, kind of looked like the Baba Duke, if you've ever seen that movie, or at least you know of what like that movie monster looks like. And uh, obviously it didn't really work out too well since uh, Sero Sato show up at the end of the previous chapter to help Izuku against All for One. Cut to the present and Aizawa asks how long it's been since Deku lost his arms. And Deku says he doesn't really know since it all happened in the mental world. Deku says that in UA he could feel Shigaraki rebelling inside All for One but not anymore and what's going on. We see a flashback of Eri giving her horn to Aizawa. She knows that she can't go to the battlefield, so she wants at least her horn to get there. He asks how she did that, and Eri replies that Ectoplasm helped her cut it. Ectoplasm apologizes, but says that Eri learned from Aizawa. I guess she's referring to like when Aizawa cut his freaking leg off to prevent the quirk destroying bullet from taking out his quirk factor, like when Shigaraki hit him with it in the previous war. <laughs> she's rational like Aizawa, but she also does crazy things from time to time. Aizawa says that this could permanently damage her quirk, and Eri says that she wanted to do this to help All Might and Kachan-san too, but she couldn't. So now she wants to help. So that's like a pretty uh, mean tease from Horikoshi here, wanting to help All Might, which like I've been saying for many years now, she could have used her quirk on him, but uh, it is what it is, guys. I'll go more into it in my review. Uh, the what if, you know, Eri used her quirk on All Might. And, uh, you know, helping Kachan, which is uh, Bakugo, of course, but uh, he's already been helped. So uh, it mainly could have helped All Might here, but it is what it is. Eri says her dream is to sing like Jiro, and she wants Deku and everyone else to have fun when the war is over. 
Cut to the present and Aizawa pierces Deku with Eri's horn. Ectoplasm says that she didn't have much energy, so it should take two to three minutes for him to heal. Aizawa says that Deku can't die until he hears Eri singing. The chapter ends with Mineta, Kaminari, Shoji, Momo, Koda, and the other heroes coming out of the portals. They say they're exhausted, but the fact that Midoriya is doing his best makes their bodies move on their own. Okay, so like I was also saying, we're probably going to see the rest of Class 1A show up here for the final battle and help out because they all kind of need their moments here. Yeah, it would have been nice if we got some more chapters dedicated to them having their own individual moments and their own individual final battles not full chapters of course but at least one or two panels but i guess we'll just get it here with them going against all for one which is cool but apparently you can just take Ares horn and just pierce somebody with it and her quirk will activate which obviously we didn't know was a thing before but i guess this is uh horikoshi's way of just utilizing Ari because i guess it kind of has to right outside of using overhaul's quirk which we were also talking about was a way to save izuku or just bring back his arms here or i was talking about about maybe Tenko within uh, the Shigaraki slash all for one vessel here awakening his quirk in some way and then bringing out the regenerative property of it since we found out that his decay quirk was just an augmented version of overhaul's quirk but they took away the reconstruction aspect of it but no they're going to use Eri's quirk by just piercing Izuku with the horn and once that's done his arms come back but I guess it's going to take two to three minutes but I guess it just fully happens in this chapter but yeah Izuku's arms are back but I don't think he has all for one still but we'll talk more about that uh, in the review guys that's pretty much it for this one let me know what you think about all this in the comments and if you liked it please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already have a great day i'll see you in the next one